Okay, so here's a little trick I learned uh, that I'm sharing with you guys. It's a really a cool anatomy trick um, that helped me draw a lot better. And once I understood that, I was able to construct my anatomy a lot better. So this is for somebody who wants, you know, to simplify anatomy uh, or to simplify what you're looking at. Either if you're reconstructing something from the, from the get-go or if you're uh, drawing from life. So I basically, like, this is not something that I've invented, although I've kind of observed and I've noticed that it has been observed by a lot of other people. So um, it works. Um, Glenn Vilpu, I think, if I'm saying his name right, uh, talked about this too, and some anatomy books mention it. So it's not something new. It's not something that I've, I've created. So it's basically two shapes. I think about them as like, uh, like a gooey... Um, how do you describe it? Um, really what looks like Play-Doh type, you know, something that's gooey that can be a ball or can be stretched like dough and, and, a, um, and a board, and a, like, a, like a two by four board. Um, for those who don't know what that is, if, if you're not from the United States, that's just uh, a piece of wood, like a board. Um, anyway. So the boards really represent the bones and the doughy bit represents muscles. And a combination of these two, and, you know, will produce a structure of a body or anatomy or an arm or a leg. So um, as a practice, as a doodle, usually what I like to do is just to, to do as many of these shapes as possible uh, before I start drawing. And... Um, it kind of helps warm me up and it kind of helps me get into that frame of thinking and that mind. And, and then eventually I start um, looking at my reference or whatever anatomy that I'm trying to reconstruct in that similar, you know, with that type of thinking. So I start off with the two shapes separately and then I start um, interlocking them, doing an in and out. Um, like you're seeing here, you know, and I'll try uh, in, a, in a second here, apply that to actual anatomy and see as you're here doing. I might do more videos on this, although I don't want to be redundant, um, but it really works on a lot of things. Um, it works on normal objects too, and it doesn't have to, your practice does not have to be perfect. So um, it, you just start, just start trying to get comfortable because it will teach you a lot about form and how to wrap form around uh something solid so you have one solid object that does not have any plastic plasticity um that's always going to be that's your board right it's just always going to be straight it's a straight up board and then you're going to have something that can twirl around it and wrap around it and you'll have a better understanding of form if you keep doing that and that really just how a muscle wraps around a bone sorry about the lighting by the way this is really like cheap iPhone uh, um, type quality and type lighting. This is so professional. Um, but hey, um, uh, it's the substance. <laughs> it's the substance that matters. Anyway, so start wrapping these in and out. Have them come out of each other. Um, uh, try to do as many angles as possible. I'm not being super creative with this, as you can see. I'm just being really simple. You can start really simple and let your imagination flow. Um, uh, try to do it from as many perspectives as, as you can. And don't think about anatomy at this point. You're literally thinking a box or a board and a flexible ball. That's really all I'm thinking right now. Um, try to apply some weight, apply some gravity, play around with the form, and really all that, all a body is, is a combination of these forms and your ability to play with them. Like, see what you can do with this. Um, Sometimes if I'm stuck and I don't know what to draw and I'm like on the phone or in an office or try, you know, I just keep doing these on and on and on again. Um, 
if I want to warm up and I'm not sure what to do, this is how I warm up. Um, so I'm in this little thing here, I'm reconstructing a hand, uh, a back view of the hand, a three quarter back view of the hand, and kind of demonstrating how how these shapes are used. So it's you know, it's a board, it's a two by four board, and with a lot of balls wrapped around it, basically, a lot of doughy forms wrapped around it. Um, you can see I kind of alternate, and it actually allows you to alternate between curved and straight, which is a very good trick in anatomy, uh, and certainly in simplification, simplification of anatomy, whether you're doing comics, animation, real life, um, a master study, just just keep that thinking in mind. Um, so here, um, and you know, I'm, I'm getting a little more advanced here, but I'll try to show my process of thinking. Um, but again, lay out everything as a board, and then I'm, and then a doughy shape wrapped around it. Um, Oh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a board. It can be more of a box, but basically a rectangular or box shape and a ball shape with some force applied to it. Um, the entire body can be looked at that way. You know, your rib cages can be the ball and uh, your pelvis can be the box shape. Um, you put those two in a sock and you twist it, you basically get skin on top of it. Um, so there's a leg, um, stylized obviously, and a little, um, a little simplified, but you know, constructed from memory, uh, from imagination, mostly using interlocking circular forms into cube forms. You know, joints, where bone shows and where joint shows, that's your box form, and where muscle shows, that's your that's your round forms. Um, it, it really just helped. I've, I've struggled so much learning to construct anatomy. Everything that I've learned seemed to work when I look at a reference, but I still always had a hard time doing it straight from imagination without looking at a reference. And this helped me out a lot. It was one of those, you know, I'm, I was such a slow learner when it comes to... Because I, I don't know if you guys relate, but... When you're trying to construct anatomy from imagination uh, and you get disappointed, especially if you know that you can draw something really well by looking at it, you get super, you get really annoyed and you give up. And just to reassure yourself, you go and pull a reference and try to draw that. And you just can't get it straight. It's like, I can draw this really well. What can I pick, you know, what can I draw this from my brain? Um, but you can easily get stuck there where you're always using a reference and out of fear, you really never develop um, or practice enough your imagination skills and your construction skills, basically. And uh, I think a lot of artists uh, use procrastination um, as a disguise for fear or use practice as a disguise for uh, fear because like, well... I'm really scared and I really don't know how to do this. So I'll just keep practicing. I'll just, I'll just pull up references and keep practicing. Really not being honest with yourself there. Because I wasn't. And if you're experiencing the same thing, try different tricks. Um, uh, the, ana the Force Anatomy book. I forget. Michael Matasi, Matasi, some Mat Michael something. Um, that was a breakthrough. Because I did the Loomis and I did the Bridgman. And they're all great when you're looking at a reference. But it's, it was very hard for me to apply that stuff out of my imagination um, or stylize it. Everything looked stiff and mechanical. And the Forest Anatomy book to help me understand um, just how to be fluid and not to be too precious and careful with lines and just have sweeping large lines and motions instead of like nitpicking you know and I, I used to I used to be influenced by comic books a lot so I used to draw a lot with only mechanical pencils and I never really drew with the side of the uh with the pencil and it made everything stiff and the force anatomy book helped um, but this really helped the most and this came out of um uh, this actually evolved from 
from the force anatomy teachings, you know, from juxtaposing or alternating between curved and straight. Um, so, you know, you do enough curves and straights, you realize there are, okay, soft, soft places in the body where they're just basically circular forms, and then there's hard ridges of the body. And some of Bridgman's anatomy actually were were very blocky sometimes, um, and uh, the, he put muscle on top of it, so I kind of got that idea a little bit from Bridgman while I started to draw. Um, okay, so he, here with the, uh, with the red brush here, I'm highlighting the structures underneath, where, where is the ball and where is the, uh, where is the board. Um, so it's basically, uh, I, I built that forearm on top of a board. And, you know, if, if you can move a board in perspective, you really can draw limbs from any, any angle, you know, just draw these from perspective and you'll, you'll be good. I guess I could make a video if you guys want a video about drawing things in perspective, like these simple shapes, just let me know, comment below, let me know. And I can make a video on that. Here's a more stylized, simplified way. And even, even as a stylized, um, over-exaggerated, it still works. It's kind of fun to, it's, it's fun shape design. Um, you can be as, and obviously the more you practice this and, and the more you know it better, uh, the more subtle you can be with it. Uh, and when you achieve a level of subtlety, you, you know, you really only, you really need to achieve an eye for subtlety first. And when you achieve it, um, uh, you can achieve it in your drawing. And, and, but I'm, I'm of the frame of mind is like, learn how to exaggerate it first because you'll know it's there. Because it's very difficult to find subtle things from the get-go. If you exaggerate them first, your mind n knows that it's there. So when you keep looking at it, so I mean, it's easier to identify. I'm rambling here. Um, but you know what I mean. So like, don't be too scared to exaggerate it first. Just exaggerate in practice um, and you'll get there. So again, I'm... I'm feel maybe less confident in what I did so I kind of went back to practicing a simple shape it really looks kind of if you think about it really now looking at it, it really looks like a drumstick almost um, you know like a piece of bone and a piece of uh, you know a, 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 you know a piece of drums a piece of thigh sticking out of a bone like or a bone sticking out of a thigh I guess so um, here's a more subtle um, uh, drawing not not too obvious but not too subtle either like I just want to emphasize these shapes I think uh, so that's a shoulder there um, biceps are indicated with the board again alternating a curved with a um, with a straight um, so that's a forearm and the hand comes down from the forearm, but I, I don't want to detail this or uh, a little too much. I just want to emphasize the shape that we've just done right there. Like if you, if, if you see it, if you can pay attention to it, it's, uh, you know, the bulk of the forearm muscles right there. <laughs> yeah, great hands. Maybe I should, you guys want to see a hand video? Because that's just going to be hilarious. I mean, gorgeous looking hands right there. Um, God, what a shame. Hands on might be the most difficult thing. I still, I still use a lot of reference for hands because they're just very difficult for me. Um, they're so expressive and there are a million ways. This, the hand is never a formula, you know, it's just, but that's not a hand video. We're not really focused on the hands. Look at that shape in its simplest form. You know, lumping all the muscles together as one big circular thing and a board that's sticking out of it. Um, I, I hope you guys find this helpful because it really, it really was a breakthrough for me. Um,
and you don't have to be so straight with that ball too. You know, you see how it curves and it can be at an angle and it can reveal from one side more of the side of the board and on the other side it can cover less, uh, just like the shin here. So kind of just, um, I would recommend going through a lot of your anatomy and seeing where these shapes happen. Obviously I'm doing this only with limbs at this point, but it 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 occurs with the overall shape of the body too um definitely don't limit this to only the limbs the limbs was a good way to explain it and then you know use some force stylize it a bit um uh, understand the forms and the structure underneath of it um uh, but yeah definitely apply it to the entire body um it, it's and i hope it helps let me know if you find this helpful and if you tried and worked it out. Let me know what you think, guys. All right, thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe and follow my social media.